Kia ora. Welcome back to Sloan Ranger Studio. My name is Sloan, and if the uh, terrible attempt at a top knot didn't give it away, today we're going to be uh, putting Ragnar onto the painting table. Ragnar Blackmane, probably the coolest, maybe top five coolest Space Wolves out there, but I mean, he's the new kid on the block, you know, he's the young pup, everybody's talking about him, so I thought it'd be a good chance to show how I do some Space Wolf armor. I just use the regular old Space Wolf colors that G-Dub provides, you know, the Fang, Rust Grey, Fenrisian Grey, and of course Black. Now if uh, you want to follow me on all the social medias, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter as well. Um, and if you so feel like it, I'm also on Patreon. Uh, like I've said before, you know, my content will always be free. Uh, Patreon is just there if you feel like, you know, giving me a little bit of extra support. Uh, you know, maybe shouting me a coffee or, you know, shouting me a brush every now and then. God knows I use them. So, without further ado, I reckon we get into it, eh? Alright, so here's our Ragnar Blackmane, the new plastic miniature that uh, G-Dub gave us. It is an awesome sculpt. I mean, it's it's so extra. It's so over the top. And, like, look at the point on that cloak. It's really sexy, I mean, the shape and the movement of it is awesome. But anyway, what we're going to be doing is painting our deep moody blue armor that, uh, you know, the artwork has inspired me to do. So the first thing we're going to do is base coat. Well, we've already got a black undercoat, but first thing we want to do is base coat all of the armor areas in black. So I'm just using Abaddon black, but any old black will do. It's just going to be the kind of foundation going forward and I just want a nice consistent black for the uh, the upcoming blends that we're going to be doing so you know all of these armor panels I don't know what color they're going to be yet maybe his knee pads will be a different color but all I'm going to do is just all of these areas I think are going to be blue start by making them black so go around and do that all across Ragnar all right so there is the uh, black black coat done super interesting it's looking amazing sign it in he's now a raven guard anyway next step is to go 50 50 with the fang and the black that we were just using so the fang is um you know this kind of deep dark desaturated blue got a bit of gray in it you know that kind of thing um but uh you know if you're not using the citadel colors yeah just look for a grayish blue kind of like a cold gray or a cold blue something like that Anyway, we've got our 50-50 black and the fang. We've thinned it down quite a bit. And if you've seen me do, you know, non-metallic metal or any of that kind of that kind of thing on this channel before, you'll know what I'm about to do here. I'm just going to pick out some places where I want my light sources to be, like on this knee here. And I'm just pushing, pushing this dark blue to where I want that light to be most concentrated and, you know, down the side of his leg here. Yeah, just push... Push the paint into that there, up there, you know, maybe along the top of this boot here. Just push it in. Like I was saying about the artwork before, you know, if you actually look at the artwork for uh, most, you know, most factions or, you know, any kind of artwork in general, actually, you know, the blending isn't always, like, perfect, you know, like, you, they, 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 they're, they artists do a good job of capturing the texture and you know getting a little bit of life into the uh, the art that they're you know creating. So that's kind of how I try and do it as well. You know I'm not like too concerned with my with my blends. Obviously I want them to look convincing, but you know I don't need them to look like they were rendered in a computer program. You know, so I just kind of push my paint around and start you know formulating where I want my highlights to be and with this miniature you can sort of see there's like a you know, if I, there's like a quite a angle you know that the, the miniature's position is creating and so I want my highlights to kind of you know emphasize that so you know maybe a streak of light running down through this angle of his chest and through this angle of his belly bit here and you know a nice prominent highlight along the edge of this leg here and maybe along this leg too and, you know, just trying to emphasize that movement with the light as well is, um, you know, going to look quite powerful. So, you know, work your way around and, you know, push this push this uh, first coat to where you want your highlights to begin. Um, and, yeah, we'll come back for the next step. 
all right super hard to see but we've gone and added in that 50 50 mix of the fang and black next thing we're going to do is go to just the fang on its own so i've thinned it down quite a bit you know we want these layers to be uh you know a little bit transparent so they can react with what's underneath kind of helps with the uh the blending so same thing start with his knee again i'm just gonna very loosely just kind of push push this fang into this area here and you know down towards this angle of the leg here do a couple little squiggles push some paint into here we're going to be tidying up later you know in terms of our uh, panel panel lines you know those little little gaps between panels and you know, we'll be glazing in some black a little bit later to tidy some things up but you know where you uh, had started to add in your highlight color start to layer up the fang in this step and, you know taking up a little bit less surface area with each one staying you know staying messy-ish you know we don't want to be getting paint all over things that we're not not intending to paint blue and make it more difficult later but you know we're not I'm not being super precise at this point you know I kind of like keeping it nice and free so yeah work your way around and layer up that fang all right so i've gone and added in a couple of coats of the fang there nice and thin i was just thinking i'd show you know in case you are wanting to go back and you know remedy any of these blends you know they they do they weren't quite to your fair to your liking we all i do anyway is take a thin bit of uh black and just kind of go over the over the transition areas that you know weren't to your liking you know, take off any excess you don't want too much on your brush here and um yeah you can just kind of loosely brush over those areas in a kind of glaze like fashion you know nice and thin coat of just pure black here and that'll just help tidy up some of these transitions if that's uh that's what you feel it needs and i did feel it needed some i think some of these are a little bit a little bit too loose that's fine i'm having fun so yeah if you need to correct anything you can just go around and plays in some black and kind of help ease these transitions all right so we've tidied up with that black like i was just saying and uh the next step is going to be brightening it back up actually i tell a lie the next step is actually going to be filling in all of those armor panel lines i was talking about before before we get too carried away i want to go through and just kind of correct them and make sure that they're nice and uh nice and clean before we start taking it to the next step so what we're doing is i've got a little bit of thinned black on the end of my brush and where all of these kind of gaps between panels are i'm just uh tidying them up kind of underside of this panel here and you know you might want to kind of go around some of these rivets give them a bit of shape but yeah keep the keep the the, the, the black nice and thin go back around and correct these panels if they've got away on you a little bit so where were we that's right so the next step we're going to be doing is a 50 50 of the fang and uh russ gray which is like the next step up in those citadel space with colors so i've just made a 50 50 mix keeping it nice and thin and same thing we're just kind of pushing pushing this paint up towards our kind of brightest areas and you know Give it a little bit of a feather and keep our keep our transitions smooth enough that it looks convincing but like i was saying before i'm not that concerned with uh you know trying to create the the smoothest of blends you know i'm not trying to create an imp cat <laughs> you know i'm i'm painting i'm using a brush and i don't really mind that you can see that and if you ever need to kind of blend it do what we did with the black before and just kind of go down a step and you might need to just you know glaze over some fang to the uh the transition to kind of help help the two but kind of work your way around and start brightening up that blue to the the 50 50 of russ and the fang you can start to see that uh that light coming through there nicely all right so we've gone and added that thin coat of the 50 50 mix between uh, the fang and russ and uh, as you probably guess the next step is just going to be russ on its own and so you know 
I like this staggered approach where you kind of mix in the previous color with the new color. Helps make the uh, the blends believable, makes them, you know, easy to do as well, which is which is nice, you know, like the, the colors being staggered like this, it just kind of makes every layer that much easier. But again, same thing, so not too much on your brush, I've just got, uh, what's it called, Russ. Russ on my brush now, just on its own, pushing it in. Take off any excess and uh, then feather it with that brush and uh, yeah, kind of make your way around doing this sort of thing all over. You know, we're kind of getting getting towards the end of our end of our process here with this blue, getting that moody moody blue across. So yeah, go around and. Add that all over. So I just record some of these, some of these glaze steps, so you sort of get an idea what I'm doing with this paint. So it's nice and thin, and I'm just doing little, little squiggles, and then I lick my brush, take off any excess paint, and I just, I just give it a rough little feather, just along the edges of, edges of that that fresh paint. Yeah, pick out some edges here and there. Mainly I'm just being nice and loose and every every step of this process that I'm I'm loose it all kind of adds together and creates this really nice sort of textured blend which is um which is kind of what kind of what I'm after you know it's the sort of thing I was talking about with the artwork being what inspires me to do this you know and those those amazing digital and you know actual you know physical physical brush artists um you know working on canvas or whatever it happens to be you know they're, they're they're working with texture they're working with you know actual shapes and i think it looks really cool and so i'm trying to just sort of emulate that with this with this process of just kind of like loose loosely adding in thin thin layers every every uh every pass it kind of just builds up to this nice, nice effect that looks quite, uh, quite real. You know, it's not, not something produced by a computer. It's produced by a paintbrush. But yeah, you can sort of see what I see what I mean as I build up this lighter blue. It's not perfect by any means. You know, you can see brush marks and strokes and little little blotches and bits like that, but. I think it adds up to something really nice. So anyway, go around and add that uh, rust grey all over. Alright, so there's that coat of uh, rust on its own. Next step is to mix in a little bit of rust grey on its own. Uh, sorry, so mix a little, a little bit of Fenrisian grey with the rust grey. Nothing on its own. We're mixing. Anyway, so 50-50 of that. Thin it down. And yeah, getting right towards the end of it now. Not too much on your brush. And just in those those areas where the light's starting to really ping off this uh, this uh, this space wolf armor, we're really looking at boosting it up for this last step before we do a couple of edges. So nice and thin, just pushing this paint around and up into our highlights. A couple little squiggles here and there. And yeah, it's starting to look quite a uh, quite dramatic now hopefully like something out, out of one of the codexes that's what we're going for really work it into those highlights now and you know work your way around the mini and complete that last step before we come in for a couple of edge highlights to finish her off all right so we're almost at the end of the process here for the armor for the space wolves so the last thing to do is to give it some edge highlights. Wouldn't be Space Marine Power Armor without some edge highlights. And so I'm just taking a little bit of Fenrisian Grey, just on its own, nice and thin. And just uh, around some of these prominent edges, just giving it a nice little edge. That's just going to help pop it out even more. And, you know, there's some things around, like we might want to pop out these rivets. That look like they're catching a, a little bit of light as well. 
and they just add a nice little bit of character to the armor you know the rivets and uh, you know sort of be careful around some of these you know uh, vents and stuff you know they can be a tricky edge to catch but just do your best thinning your paint a little bit helps and I don't personally like highlighting every single edge on the armor I only like to highlight the ones that are facing upwards you know the ones that are going to catch the light so I don't bother going around both sides of these little vents um, but I do you know like to catch these sort of bits of the panel here these edges along here nice and gently does it yeah, maybe catch out some of the corners which kind of helps look like bits of lighter bouncing around he's in some dramatic scene fighting some big orc or something oh hey that's what it does so yeah, go around and add in some edge highlights. I like, you know, in the case I haven't really talked about it, but I haven't put the head of Ragnar on, and that's because I hate getting into this edge here when there's a head. I still hate it. It's quite a tricky little edge to catch. But yeah, go around and put in some nice crispy edge highlights all over your Space Wolf Mini. So a quick tip when it comes to edge highlighting is I like to always keep my brush at one angle and I turn the miniature to match that angle. I find that trying to you know move my brush around and catch edges, I often will well you know that's when I'll that's when I'll slip up. So I'll twist my miniature around to kind of match the brush angle that I'm comfortable with. And it just kind of keeps keeps things nice and consistent. It means I can just keep this movement going, which is you know where I'm most comfortable. And of course, I like to keep my my paint thin, and you definitely need to take the excess off when it comes to edge highlighting. That's when you get like big blobs. All right, so we've gone around and added in those edge highlights, and it's looking pretty pretty dramatic now. Eh, here's just an optional step if you're into it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some tiny little dinks and chinks. So, little, uh, you know, marks on his armor, like, you know, things have kind of grazed off him or he's, you know, tackled a tank or other marines or whatever it happens to be. So, you know, just a couple of little, couple of little marks here and there, nothing too extreme, just to kind of add a little bit of texture to well a little bit more texture to the um to the armor that we've already created so yeah this is optional you don't have to i just i just feel like it okay there we go there is our finished armor for ragnar you know you can use it for any old space wolf i'm pretty happy with how that turned out you know like i was talking about you know it's got that it's got that texture like it was done with a brush you know it's got that life in the brushwork which is you know well, I'm, I'm really passionate about keeping that in my work you know it makes it look makes it look alive to me it's just my opinion you know you can obviously paint however however you want this is just how i do it and you know i'm just showing you how i do it how i do this is how i do uh anyway i'm happy with how he came out there were a couple of bits that uh weren't as nice as i wanted but I think overall we got what we were talking about with that angle of the highlights. I think there's a lot of drama and the lighting going on on this guy. It's hard to judge when there's only one color going on and black is a tricky undercoat to show off a miniature. But I think for now that armor is, uh, it's, it's what I wanted. You know, once it's got a few reds in there, a few more warm tones. You know, it's got this yellow sword. He's got a yellow shoulder pad, I'm pretty sure. So... Yeah, I think once uh, once we get to those steps, this armor will start to really shine. But for now, I'm happy. I hope you like it. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe. And if you uh, want to see more of Ragnar, comment below what you want to see next. Um, I'm happy to just leave this as a Space Wolf tutorial. But if you want to see more of him and see how I see how I do him up, I will uh, I will record it for you. So yeah, comment below if you want to see that. And uh, you know like and subscribe and all of that and of course if you feel like supporting me uh 
with more than a subscription. I, I do have Patreon as well, but my content will always be free. The Patreon is just uh, to support me on top of that and, of course, help, you know, get more and better content over to you. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I will uh, see you for the next video. Bye.